Welcome to Your Strata Property, the podcast for property owners looking for reliable, accurate and bite-sized information from an experienced and authoritative source. To access previous episodes and useful strata tips, go to www.yourstrataproperty.com.au. Hello and welcome. I'm Amanda Farmer and this is Your Strata Property. Dino Biordi has a 20-year history across several services in the building and construction industry with a focus on plumbing, gas and central heating services. The history has been his springboard to discovering his passion in the building and facilities management space. Dino launched Luna, the building management company, in July 2015 in response to people requesting quality service with a difference. Luna provides professional building managers that are both proactive and passionate about making a positive difference to buildings, people and communities. Today, I am delighted to welcome Dino Biordi of Luna, the building management company. Hi, Dino. Hello, Amanda. Thank you so much for having me here on your podcast. As you know, I'm a big fan of yours and I'm super excited to be here with you and uh, I hope that I can add some value to your audience. Absolutely. I'm sure you can. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, I hope you'll forgive me for saying, Dino, that we have tried to coordinate this interview a couple of times now, but because of busy schedules and some technology glitches, I'm not uh, I'm not naming names here, but uh, we do have problems with NBN and all the wonderful Sydney internet or lack thereof. <laughs> we finally made it happen. So really excited to have you with us to chat about all things building and facilities management. Uh, one thing I do know, Amanda, when you've got a contractor on site, one thing you don't want to do is usher them away. So, yeah, keep them on site and you know, make sure they're doing, keep doing what they're doing. <laughs> yes, definitely. If anyone can hear a little bit of noise in the background, uh, it's not my fault, I promise. It's a necessary work that must be done. Such are the joys of living in Strata. <laughs> we'll do our best. Exactly. All right. Let's start, Dino, with uh, having you tell us why good building management is essential for people living in Strata. I mean, the good building management is critical because we are effectively responsible for a portfolio worth millions, if not tens of millions of dollars. Owners and strata committees have every right to expect a high level of professional services with such a critical, delicate, and sometimes emotional built environment. We are talking about people, families, babies, teenagers, mums and dads, disabled, the elderly, they all live in strata buildings. I mean, we are privileged as building managers to be looking after such a sacred place and and it's a place that people call home. We have a massive responsibility here. People living in strata just want to know that their homes, investment, nest egg are being looked after. In this built environment, building management companies are responsible for people's safety, both residents and the visitors that come to site, and the contractors we invite to site to perform the works. People's security, to ensure that they feel safe within the community they live in, and when they fall asleep, they feel secure. Protecting operations you know, within a building and all the assets within the building, um, we, we want to ensure that we get the right service providers on site uh, with a joint effort to add value to not only um, ensuring that the operations are in line with the proactive maintenance, uh, working uh, efficiently and effectively, but we don't blow any budgets, that we have an expenditure and a budget we need to uphold, and this takes skill. If there is a blowout, this can cause stress in people's lives. People today, they have enough work and family commitments. They shouldn't have to need to worry about whether they can trust their building manager wholeheartedly. Owners need to know that their building manager company is representing them at all times with integrity, honesty, and with due diligence. It is a big commitment. <laughs> that is a huge <laughs> job. I, I often say that strata managers have a hard task and uh, there's a lot that's asked of them. Um, from what I'm hearing here, Dino, building managers I think are going to be my new heroes. <laughs> that's uh, oh, yeah. a very long list of skills and a very long to-do list. Yes. Uh, look, we, in terms of building management, it's a very unique industry. I, I think the skill set that was required is underestimated and sometimes undervalued. 
Yes, it was only last Friday I was chatting to a building manager who was giving me some information that I needed uh, for an owner's corporation and I think it was about four o'clock on Friday and he finally returned my call. I said, how are you? He said, stressed. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> oh, it's four o'clock on a Friday. You know, what, what are you stressed about? Surely it's nearly knockoff time. And he said, not for a building manager. He said, I've been no. wrapped up in something else and all I've got on my phone are messages and I haven't even sat down at my desk. It is textbook. You know, Friday afternoon, uh, we get the call. We we don't have the luxury of turning our phones off, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're definitely hard workers. So you've given us there a list of uh, some of the things that building managers do uh, and there's real insight there into how you actually impact people's lives day to day. It's not just about keeping the building running. It's really about keeping people's lives running smoothly and looking after families and I really like that perspective. Can you give us sort of the, a day in the life of yourself as a building manager or your team? What does a, a good building manager look like? Uh, what does their day look like? What skills are they relying on every day? And think about maybe people listening who might want to become building managers or have a closer look at that industry. What kind of attributes are going to be key for a person in that role? A good building management company, I'd judge it by the people that work for them, the actual building managers. Outside of building management requirements or building managers' um, knowledge in the industry, we know they've got to have a, a baseline understanding of how the building operates. But outside of that, there are two main attributes that I look for in a building manager. And it's, it's something that, you know, I've hired people and, and I've made mistakes and I've learned what, what are the attributes that are required outside of patience. And it's really having a, a positive attitude and a curiosity in nature. So th those two buckets are, are big for me. When we talk about attitude, what I look for is, you know, is that candidate or the building manager, do they complain and blame or do they provide solutions? Do they look outside themselves? And what I mean by that, do they have a real social awareness, awareness around how they impact others and the environment that they're around and realise their full potential? For me, I used to know that with that attitude that these building managers or candidates, they have a genuine want to listen to people and want, want to make an impact. I think that's very important. Today they call it emotional intelligence and um, you know, empathy, and, and I think that is, is paramount. It's a must today. In terms of building management, it's so sophisticated today that you've just got to have that positive attitude, that candid attitude, the, the emotional intelligence and the empathy to to listen because a lot of it is management and, uh, and of people. That's the variable, the, the people. The system and, and the, the processes are, are there. They're quite easy to follow. But, you know, you've got the variabilities of people and everyone's different and mm. everyone interacts differently. And I think, Dino, if I can just jump in there, if you have those skills, if you're the type of person who has those people skills and that positive attitude and you're clearly doing what you love every day, you're going to have that longevity in the job as well. And I'm sure you that's as a right. as a business owner, um, that's something that is key to you and really valuable. But also as a building, as a strata community, when you're looking to hire someone, people might come to you, committees, strata managers might come to you, Luna, and say, look, we'd like to have you guys manage our building and you might put forward one of your team and you really want and the building really wants, the man strata manager really wants that person to stay in that role for as long as possible and to be really invested in the community and in the day-to-day. -day. Absolutely, 100%, Amanda. When you talk about those attributes you just talked about, uh, I, I really distilled it to the attitude, you know, having that someone with the right mindset and the right attitude, that understanding what, what that is and what that looks like is, is paramount. And then second to that, Amanda, is, is uh, you know, are they curious in nature? Uh, for me, once the attitude is there, success then comes from skill set and training. And there is no doubt that people with the right diplomas and certificates in FM in building management are very good. And FM is in facilities management and BM is in building management. But if you're curious in nature, people will naturally want to grow, learn and evolve. People with little experience in building management, however, are interested in their work will be on their way to be a good building manager within a very short time. I have seen it, and it's great. When people genuinely have an interest in their industry and in growth and developmental, and they obviously want to upskill professionally and personally, they end up being the high performers. 
For me, it's known or expected today that a building manager has a trade background. Yes, there's value there. I've got a trade background and then it has added so much value. But I've seen very good building managers that come from different sectors, uh, accounting background, strata management background, hospitality, concierge. The flip side to this, Amanda, is I've met building managers with over 10 years, 10, even two decades worth of experience in the industry, and I've not hired them. Set in their ways, you know, I I think the skill set uh, you really want, someone that knows how to manage people, That that's the, the really fundamental. How, can they manage people? That's the volatility. That's the variable that I see in building management. You know, if they've been in senior roles and if they've successfully managed teams of people, if they've owned businesses, then generally you have a, a good skill set for that built environment. Mm. Now, we'll have some listeners who maybe are living in a building where they have a building manager, they know exactly what it is that the building manager does, why they're there, and we'll have buildings that have perhaps never heard of a building manager. What kind of a building, is it only large buildings? Is it only prestigious buildings that have building managers? Is it a full-time job? Is it a part-time job? Can you give us just a bit of an outline of the different ways that building managers can service different types of buildings? Sure, uh, Amanda. It really depends on the uh, the service level that the customer is looking for, or the the strata committee looking for, the the group of owners. To give an example of this, I've seen buildings with um, sixty apartments, and they don't have a building manager; they just have a strata manager. And, I, and yes, I do think it's crazy, but they have a strata manager that sometimes visits, visits or or not. And they try to manage that from a distance from their office and organize all the contractors that come on site. I have a site that has eight apartments and a full-time concierge building manager. So it really depends on the service level of what the customers are looking for. But I will say this, whether it's uh, 10 apartments, 30 apartments or 100 apartments, they generally have the same assets given that they're a multi-storey large structure with a lift and some pumps, they generally have the same assets and the same care is required. And it really baffles me when someone goes, oh, look, uh, we don't need a building manager. We only have 35 apartments. But the same care is needed. It really is to, to really prolong the life of those assets. Mm, and it is possible, uh, in my experience, what I see with contracts that come across my desk and communicating with building managers, it is possible to have a part-time building manager or a casual sort of on-call. Absolutely. Yeah, that might be a solution for those buildings who think maybe their needs are a little bit less than than full-time. It's certainly possible to still get that value from a building manager on different terms. Yes, absolutely. We, we've got the, the smaller sites that we have, absolutely part-time, but uh, – Two hours a week where we, we go to a site where we do an inspection weekly uh, to make sure that everything's uh, running okay, there's no leaks, there's no, nothing that needs replacing. But the, the extra hour that we use is to organise the work that comes up uh, should something arise during that week. So even for the smaller sites, there is room to have it, just a couple of hours for a building manager to show up and just make sure you have a, a maintenance plan in place, they, they're checking the work. And you have someone uh, that's working for the strata committee and knows – what the smart community is looking for in terms of the right people and getting the work done within the right price, of course. And being on site, I think, is key. As you say, that's yes, that's often yeah. the difference with a strata manager who is often sitting behind the desk and not necessarily visiting the site and not being able to solve those problems firsthand. It, it horrifies me, some of the stories I hear, and, and um, I do hear that, that sometimes that the strata managers don't even show up. Oh, um, yeah, I believe that. It's, yeah, it's just crazy. Yeah. All right. Have you got any stories for us, Dino, some buildings that you've been working with where your building management skills have been able to achieve a great result for them that you'd like to share with us? Yes, look, one that comes to mind, um, I helped owners create just basic stuff. When we come on site, we quite easily make a huge difference. We put together a building management plan. I was invited to a building and discovered they didn't have just a basic photographic asset register, no critical asset plan with a mud map and I mean, they didn't know where the critical assets were to shut down the power, the water, the gas, you know, your main your main services. There was no proactive maintenance plan in place. So, you know, we'll then, we, we created one and we we're making a massive difference or massive impact straight away so off the bat. Um, I explained to the Strata community that it shouldn't be just proactive maintenance, that we need to be proactive about maintaining a building and the services within that. I also helped them start the discussion of, what vision they had for their building and 
what their ultimate goal was and then choosing a roadmap that also was in line with their finances. I think a lot of charter committees don't have that conversation. And if they don't have that conversation, what happens is the building managers aren't led correctly and we, it's hard to steer the ship or know which direction if they don't have that conversation to start with. And then further to that, look, I, I remember receiving a call from a charter committee member who told me, look, they're, they're looking for a new building management company. So they approached me and they said, look, um, we'd like you to have a look at our building and see if um, you know, you'd like to look after our building for us. We're not happy with our previous building management company. And here's our admin budget. And, and I was hoping that I could have a look at it and with, ex- with my experience help them with an admi- administration budget. And because of the size, I had uh, similar size projects within my portfolio. So I, I said, not a problem, I'll look at it. And uh, after spending some time with it, Looking at the most cost-effective options in line with the proactive maintenance, the budget I was proposing was two times more than the, the recommendation they put forward. So you can imagine I was reluctant to send this through to the Strata Committee but because, uh, you know, they, they see what their budget is. They see what the new building management company comes through and puts one forward and the seats double the price. So to my delight and my surprise, I was giving thanks and praise. They just had no idea what assets were in their building and, what maintenance was required to maintain it. And believe it or not, there had been a building management company there previously to us commencing and it's just crazy. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised that there would be many buildings out there who have ineffective, let's say, building managers who are there simply because they've been there for many, many years, have become uh, perhaps a bit relaxed, a bit complacent, and the committee also becoming a bit complacent and perhaps not realising the value there is to be obtained from having a more proactive, more skillful, switched-on building manager. So it's also a good reminder for committees out there to perhaps uh, remember to reassess your building management contracts in the same way that you might with your strata management contract and make sure you're always getting the best value and the best service. Yeah, Amanda, I'm not sure why, um, but there seems to be a, um, a hesitation around changing managers, whether it be strata or building management. I struggle to understand why, but when I do, in fairness, when I do go through the handover process, I see the unprofessionalism that happens in that handover process where they try and keep a lot of the intellectual properties that actually is owned by the owners. Um, and it's, it, it's sad to see. But at the end of the day, if there is underperformance and they've had you know, warnings and they've had chances to perform, you've got a massive portfolio. Look after your nest. Look after your investment. Get someone else in who's interested in that building and then we'll look after you. Mm, absolutely. So, Dino, uh, what kind of obstacles do you find building managers uh, coming up against when they're working perhaps with strata communities or owners? And likewise, what obstacles are owners perhaps coming up against when they're working with building managers? And, and how do you suggest that they overcome those? In terms of, of a building manager, some of the things that we find that are obstacles and they should be uh, looked at very closely are ensuring that any defects that are arisen, in, especially in new buildings, that the, the building manager captures all the defects in line with the photographic evidence. And with that, they are constantly ensuring that the works are being carried out and they don't drag on. And they're working with the consultants with, the, with capturing all, all the methodology as well. Uh, finding good service providers is important. Uh, highlighting that they are a stakeholder and in the efforts of maintaining the building and ensuring that they are paid in a timely manner, I think, is important. I think people underestimate when you find good service providers that it's important to, you know, understand their terms as well as ours, and that we do uh, provide that uh, professional treatment, respect, and and pay them within a, a good time. Good relationships need to be recognised as good business. Well, things do go dramatically wrong on sites when there's a water burst and there's a flood. You're going to ask these service providers to come on site and go on beyond the call of duty. They're going to come in the middle of the night. They're going to fix the leak and uh, get you back online. I think it's important to build that co-op uh, with those service providers, build that strong team. And then with the strata committees, I think there needs to be more focus on knowing their residents and, and building managers included. Uh, we need their help. We need to know who lives in building and, and in the building. And, and this, this procedure is required to ensure residents you know, are filling out a form, an ID form, and that we get their car registration, perhaps the next of kin. And this allows to 
really bring up the security of the building. Sometimes this is overlooked and people are worried about the uh, confidentiality of losing their information to, to the building management company. But you know, we've got to keep that safe. We're going to keep that secure. We just want to make sure we know who's on site. And then the idea is to keep everyone else safe with that information. Mm, that's a, another long list of um, <laughs> things to do and steps to take for both building managers and for committees. It's not a, uh, a quick decision, I suppose, to get involved with a new building manager or a building manager full stop and there's a lot of things to cover off. Someone who's thinking about hiring a building manager or perhaps taking some steps, let's say, to ensure their current building manager is more effective, what would you say the single first thing is that they should do? What's a quick action step, a quick win that they might get on the board? Look, firstly, you, you, what I would always say is try and work with the building manager you have. I think it's important that we want to work as a team. So what I would say is go down there and just ask for a few things like safety is, is paramount. So the first thing I'd be doing is saying, okay, hello, Mr. Building Manager. Hi, how are you? But where is your contractor register and, and where are the site inductions? And just get them to go through the process of getting them to pull that out and actually have a look at their current. You know, making sure they've got all the certificate of currencies for the insurances. Now, the service providers need to have that. Uh, we need to, as building managers, ensure that they're current to make sure we're covered in, in terms of uh, insurances. Also, um, this gets a conversation going to get things in order. I do highly recommend each strata scheme, purchase a copy of the Australian Building Management Code. You've had Linda on your podcast. She's great. The ABMA, you put that under your armpit, you walk down there, you open up the page, and you just say, hey, look, this is a, a procedure here that we lo- would like to see on our site. Can you show me where that is? It's really simple. You know, you go through it, and the idea here is to just – not to crucify anyone, but just to build that strong management team and to really have um, the building manager or to give them a chance to perform. And then you can start monitoring whether you are building a strong team and a uh, successful building or that your building manager is just not interested and you do start to need to look at going to really uh, putting together a scope of work to go to tender and you might need – someone like a strata manager to help you put together a tender document to go to the market and have building managers, not only the ones that are recommended, but really go to the market and put a tender document forward for the market to respond to. Some great tips there and some uh, very clear steps that our buildings can start taking to work with their current building manager or find a new one. Thanks for those, Dino. You're a a regular podcast listener. You'll know this question. You'll be prepared for it. What books have had the greatest impact on you and why? Amanda, you know, this is the hardest question. (laughs) Oh, Uh, really? (laughs) (laughs) There are just so many books Mm. that have affected me. Uh, I love books. I'm into them big time. I didn't really start reading until my 20s. I went through school, not really enjoying school, and I, I love education now, later in my life. I mean, maybe it's a boy thing, maybe it's just me, but uh, I'm really loving education as a mature student, uh, but I am curious in nature. And look, I have to put forward a a book I read just in the recent years called Unbeatable Mind. It's by Commander Mark Devine, Navy SEAL. It isn't for everyone. Mark Devine, uh, 26, he graduated as a honor man, ranked number one trainee of Navy SEAL buds uh, in the USA. I mean, it's it's mental toughness, tapping into the limitless power of the mind. You know, it's based on the Navy SEAL philosophy. It's a book that helped me raise my performance in mind, body, emotionally, and you know, uh, not only emotionally but intuition. That's something that's been for me pushed aside. I didn't realize men had intuition. So, being able to understand that even warriors like uh, a SEAL look to the intuition to make decisions. So that was a a book I read that radically changed the way I think and, you know, position myself in the world. It helped me um, really cultivate my life's journey. 
Mm, thank you so much for sharing that one. I'll make sure that there is a link to it in the show notes. And just addressing your comment, it's, you're not sure if it's a boy thing. I can assure you that uh, self-education in your more mature years is not a boy thing. Girls, <laughs> us girls are definitely into that too. And I was just thinking of a, uh, a quote, and I think it's Jim, a quote from Jim Rohn, and it is uh, along these lines, a formal education will get you a living, self-education will get you a fortune. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Love it. <laughs> and I've Love also it, got a, a, a book suggestion for you, Dino. I thought of this after we were having a chat at the last Women in Strata event, which Luna very kindly uh, supported for us. Uh, and you were telling me how you were interested in this, uh, the personal development side of things. And I have just finished a book by Aubrey Marcus, which is called Own the Day, Own Your Life. And I'm not sure if you've come across Aubrey Marcus, but I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, knowing you if you hadn't. Is it on your bookshelf? <laughs> it is. I've, I've read it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sure. Yes. I should have mentioned it to you um, when yeah. we were having that chat because it popped into my head only later uh, and I meant to oh, text yeah. you about it. And uh, yeah, I'm not surprised that I'm you've read that fan. one. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. He's yeah. very cool. He's definitely for the boys, speaking of boys and girls. But if you can kind of take the boy stuff out of it, I found that a really clever book. Look, he's very alpha, but he's got this mm. great feminine side to him. It is a beautiful man. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, that. and very successful. Yeah. So we'll absolutely. pop a link to that one in the show notes too. It's not every episode that you get a book recommendation from me, so <laughs> that's a bit different. <laughs> I, 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 can, I, I can back that one. Uh, yeah, it's, excellent. It's a great book. I actually recommended to uh, a close friend of mine only a couple of days ago. So ah. he's went out and just ordered it. I couldn't give away my copy. I just need to keep it. Do you know, <laughs> I've actually got well. it. I've got it on audiobook and I've got to go and buy the hard copy because I've just spent the eight hours odd listening to it in the car and now I want to go back and actually look yeah. a little bit closer. So I've got to go grab a copy. I do that all the time. I often start with the audio version and I know by chapter three or four if I want the hard copy and I generally have you know, a audio copy of something. If it's good, I'll get the hard copy. Yeah, that's a good tip. All right, Dino, uh, we're going to wrap up very shortly. But before we do, let our listeners know how they can find out more about you and please do add anything else. Amanda, look, if I can ask everyone to, if they want to look for me, just please type in the search or the web browser, luna.management, that's L-U-N-A dot management. You'll find our, our website on there. You'll find all our social media feed, which I'm a, a big fan of. Um, allows me to sort of vent and let people know about what my inner thoughts, um, <laughs> whatever that may be. It's not just building manager. It, uh, I have a lot of disciplines and areas that I have positions on. Uh, it must be something that happens as you get older. You start to uh, <laughs> you have opinions. <laughs> <laughs> I have opinions, yeah. And if I may, I just want to acknowledge you and, and your amazing contribution to the industry. You are truly doing great work and I really do thank you, Amanda. Thank you very much. Uh, anybody who listens to me on the podcast and is inside my member forum knows that I do this because I love it. Yeah, I couldn't keep it up for uh, over two tell. years now yeah. if I didn't love it. It, so, comes, it comes through. It's no. great. I love it. Thank yeah, you. Well done. Thank you very keep much. Keep it up. All right. I think that's it for this episode today. That has been a jam-packed one, Dino. I look forward to chatting with you again soon. Look, I, I just want to thank you also for the sound effects. Uh, I don't know where you grabbed them from, but I think it was just <laughs> perfect for the podcast. <laughs> the sounds of strata. <laughs> Great. Take Thanks, care, Dino. Amanda. Bye. See you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Your Strata Property, the podcast which consistently delivers to property owners reliable and accurate information about their strata property. You can access all the information below this episode via the show notes at www.yourstrataproperty.com.au. You can also ask questions in the comments section, which Amanda will answer in her upcoming episodes. How can Amanda help you today?